Rob DeLuca from Spread Eagle, and you're listening to the Music Mania Podcast. This is Glenn Hughes, the voice of rock. Hey everybody, this is Pat Torpy from Mr. Big. And you're listening to Music Mania. I want you to want me. The dream police. Da, 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 da. Your mama's alright. Your daddy's alright. But just seem a little bit weak. Scream for me, Brazil! Scream for me, Brazil! So let's rock and roll all night. Come on, yeah, In the words of ACDC, we roll tonight to the guitar bite. And for those about to rock, I salute you. You are now listening to the Music Mania Podcast, brought to you by CD Warehouse in Gladstone, the number one hard rock podcast in the Midwest, featuring hard-hitting interviews with rock's living legends. And now, here is your host, Clint Schweitzer. And it is officially the holiday edition of the Music Mania podcast. Thank you so much for being with me here. I am so grateful to have you listening. Always appreciate you guys pressing that subscribe button um, any way you choose to take in your podcast, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play Music. And this week we are going to be spending some time with a very special guest, uh, Rob DeLuca, the bassist for the band Spread Eagle. I've been a fan of really that original Spread Eagle record for as long as I can remember. I remember discovering that album when I was working in a CD store. This is still in the early 2000s. I mean, this is, you know, I'm 35 years old. I had to discover a lot of the bands that I'm a fan of kind of later. And so when it comes to Spread Eagle, I was looking for bands that were kind of under the radar, maybe that were from the 80s scene that didn't get a lot of play. I, I discovered bands like... Um, well, Babylon AD, Wild Side, uh, Tough, and um, Pretty Boy Floyd. And then I come across this album. It's called Spread Eagle. It's got this like eagle on the cover, um, and it, it, it looks like something from like a military patch or something like that. And I was just mesmerized by this album because it's not your typical LA sleazy hair metal album. In fact, that 1990 debut is amazing. Songs like Broken City, Back on the Bitch, Switchblade, Serenade is an, a song that, you know, was an MTV video, so a lot of people remember that one. Hot Sex, Suzy Suicide, and that band always stuck with me. I was always a, a fan of that album since then, and uh, looking at what they did, they didn't have a huge life in the 90s. That album came out in 1990, and um, then they went on to record the follow-up, which is called Open to the Public in 1993. Um, it didn't really get a lot of play as grunge was kind of taking over. And so the band kind of went away. And then in uh, 2006, uh, it was resurrected. Um, lead singer Ray West and um, bassist Rob DeLuca put the band back together. And now in 2019, just a few months ago, they released um, their third album, which is Subway to the Stars. It is tremendous. Uh, for fans of that original Spread Eagle album, you're not going to be disappointed. Um Vocalist Ray West is in top form here. There's a video on YouTube right now via Frontiers Music called um, Sound of Speed. It's from that album. Check it out. They have a tour coming up. It starts in March um, in Maryland. They're going to be doing several dates uh, throughout the spring and summer. So check out the website, spreadeagle.us. We're going to be talking with bassist Rob DeLuca, who's been there since the beginning. Not only that, but Rob um, has also been touring, writing, and recording with UFO for the past 11 years. In addition, he's a member of the Sebastian Bach Band uh, for the last 14 years, touring as direct support for Guns N' Roses on their 2006 or 2012 Chinese Democracy Tours and as a headliner. Rob has also toured and recorded with Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Helmet, George Lynch, uh, Vinnie Moore, and much more. So Rob has been around. He's done it all. Very respected bassist in this uh, in the genre, and uh, he's going to be joining us to talk about um, the new album. Kind of um, what happened what, back in you know when the, in the original albums were released. Kind of what happened to the band. Um, obviously, he and Ray West have been able to maintain a you know a, a respect and a 
a working relationship throughout all this time, and now they're back with a new album, going forward, moving on. Uh, Frontiers Music uh, has just done a tremendous job uh, putting out records from bands, you know, like Spread Eagle. You know, Kane Roberts, our friend, just released one um, less than a year ago. They do a great job putting out consistent releases from bands that, that people still want to hear from. There's an appetite for Spread Eagle. They were a New York band. You know, they were from the East Coast. They were not a sleazy L.A. Sunset Strip band. That's very straight ahead, very heavy. Um, Ray West's voice is just kind of the searing vocals. It's almost like Jizzy Pearl if uh, he was a little more polished. I've always been a fan of that, and Rob DeLuca I'm going to be joining us to, to talk about the touring plans, what, he, what he's got going on with Sebastian Bach coming up. Of course, he's toured with Sebastian for the past 14 years, UFO. Um, so Rob has uh, kind of been around and done it all. So before we get to our interview with uh, Rob DeLuca, I've got to tell you about our sponsor, CD Warehouse in Gladstone, Missouri. Guys, for over 22 years, a staple of the Northland. They buy, sell, and trade CDs, DVDs, vinyl, and more. Do not let the vibe of the old school record store go by the wayside. Give them a visit off Antioch Road in Gladstone today and tell them Music Mania sent you, and there will be a discount or it's on us. Rob, man, how's it going, brother? Thanks so much for calling in today. It's great to hear from you. How's everything been going? Everything is great, man. You're in Kansas City? Kansas City, indeed. Um, You know what? We got uh, six inches of snow out here, but you know what? I know you're an East Coast guy. You can relate, man. So it's just, it's the time of year, right? (laughs) Yeah, it's it's cold here. We we barely got any snow, but it's, it's really cold. Well, that is to be expected. You know, all the all the people from the West Coast that we talk to and have on the show are always talking. They're always out on their yacht or they're outside. It's eighty degrees, and you know, I, I you know, I wind up really wanting to um, to hate them for it. But uh, you know what? That's uh, we get to experience all the four seasons. You know what? In the Midwest and the East Coast, very similar, I would say, in the weather, uh, Midwest and East Coast. But you, there's also the fact that you guys have like things to do, uh, and we don't. So you guys have that over us too. So. Right. <laughs> Although no winning football teams in New York right now, I don't know. I don't know what what happened there, Rob. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, man. I'm, I'm it, a Steelers fan, uh, so so that's okay. Hey, Rob. It, then if that's the case, then I got to tell you that the Steelers may be coming here to Kansas City in the in round one of the playoffs here in just a couple weeks. So we may have to we'll revisit this here. <laughs> I hope so, but I'm not sure. We'll I know, see. I know. It's a it's 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 a rough year, uh, but still in playoff contention without Ben Roethlisberger. That's 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 not a bad a bad thing at all, man. But yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. Rob, let's get into it, man, because this is such a busy time for you. It's a busy time for Spread Eagle. Things are really coming together. Um, I think a lot of people were so excited to, uh, to have you guys' first album in uh, 13 years. Subway to the Stars came out back in August. Let's start there. What's the reception been like? You know, it's had a chance to marinate here for four months or so. Frontiers did a great job, I think, with this, as they do with many other artists of your ilk. Um, a huge fan of uh, of the album myself. And, um, of course, you guys did a video, um, Sound of Speed. And what, just talk about talk about what the reception has been like so far for this uh, in, the, in the four months that it's been out. Well, it's been really great. I, I've been very happy and, and proud of, of the reactions. Um you know, it's it was it's a long time since we we released a record, so you never really know what's going to happen. So it's nice when it turns out well. So now you know everyone has a chance to to get to know the record, and now we're going to take it on the road. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a recent development. We've got uh, some shows coming up starting in March, um, running kind of all the way through uh, through June. You've got a couple months worth of dates here. It's been a while since we've seen kind of a, a, a tour. You know, I hesitate to use that term because, uh, you know, touring in its traditional sense uh, has kind of gone out the door. I mean, you guys are able to come in and kind of kind of do shows, do 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 weekends, and kind of route it so that it's a, you know a little easier on the travel. But the, you guys got several dates here, and it starts um, in Maryland, March twentieth. So, talk about how excited you are to kind of get this album, get these songs kind of in front of, in front of a live audience. I mean, that kind of brings the album to life even more, doesn't it? Yeah, we have, we have three records now, and we're pro- probably going to just split the, the set into songs into basically a third, you know, of each album. And that's, that's really exciting, because we haven't, we haven't played these songs live yet, and uh, our fans, you know, are really, really you know, jacked up for this. So it's, it's good to see. It's a good feeling. 
Well, well, it is. I mean, you guys have been around a, a long time, and but a lot of fans haven't had a chance to see you guys live. There's, you know, it's been. I mean, you guys kind of reunited back in 2006. Just talk about what the last 13 years or so have meant to you. I mean, obviously, you've been off. You've had um, a lot of other gigs. You've done a lot of other other things, whether it be UFO or Sebastian Bach or, or Helmet. But just talk about what it's been like, you know, for the legacy of Spread Eagle to have had these last 13 years of uh, making new music and, and playing shows. It's got to be a gratifying feeling, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, S- Spread Eagle is the band that I learned how to be in a band from, with, you know. So so that's where I, you know, was just a kid putting putting my first real band together. And um, so it, it, the band means a lot to me, and uh, that's why I'm... I'm pushing through and, and, and making it come, you know, helping it come to life again. Um, so yeah, the, the, the last bunch of years, we went through some different guitar players and we talked about writing, but we, and we, and we even did some writing, but we weren't like dying to record, you know, we weren't, we weren't, and, and maybe it was because the era was, we were writing wasn't what we wanted yet. Um, but when we did the tour in UK and Europe, um, when we got back, Frontiers asked us if we wanted to record, and, and, and it was time. You know, we were we were the live shows were, were really clicking, and and we were traveling, and we were bonding. So it just made sense when they asked us to step up and, and take it to the next level. Well, guys, you can go to uh, spreadeagle.us to check out all the information on the tour. I can't wait to catch it. Trying to decide which show I'm going to hit up. Probably Joliet, Illinois. Probably the closest to me in June. Um, this is going to be so tremendous. And, you know, for you guys, I always, you know, it's Spread Eagle is one of those bands that, um, I, you know, I've interviewed um, members from bands like Babylon AD and Wildside. And I kind of put you guys in that category because... Babylon ID and, and Wildside both had albums come out within about a, a year of when you guys did. And all, and all three bands, maybe it was because of the timing, maybe it was because of what else was going on in music, three amazing albums, your debut of course included, that kind of tended to get overlooked at that time. Do you? How big of a factor was timing for that? Because the original Spread Eagle album is so heralded. It's on so many <laughs> top 50, you know, hard rock albums of the 80s, uh, charts that you'll see online, but my gosh, that first album was so great. But do you feel like the timing it sort of got lost in the mix? I mean, is that is that a fair statement to say, Rob? That's that's one of the factors. Absolutely, um, music was changing. Uh, grunge was coming in, and people's reaction to grunge was that if it wasn't grunge, it wasn't good. Which you know, I liked. I liked grunge. You know, I like I like all good music. So I like you know good grunge music i like you know it's good soul music you name it so uh so it was strange when it was about oh you're not you know these bands aren't cool anymore um without even regarding their music you know like they're just not cool so we can't listen to them anymore it was really strange uh, to to see that happen not just to us to anyone um and so um yeah i think timing had definitely had something to do with it but with us it was a lot of things you know just um it was like a perfect storm or an imperfect storm of things just being tough times and uh we we didn't make it through at that time and i'm glad we are now going you know we're now back together and we're now out to finish what we started what what does that say about spread eagle in general but bands you know from that from that time period because here you guys came out and you released two albums um, in 90 and 93. And, you know, the timing, like you said, there were some different factors. I, I think your record label was probably another one of those factors that I don't think that they um, probably threw enough behind the effort, uh, certainly initially. But what does it say about Spread Eagle and, and the fact that you, that lasting impression, maybe whether it be, you know, the video for, for Switchblade Serenade that the people saw on MTV or whatever, whatever it may be, just people having holding near and dear to their hearts, those, those first two albums, that you can still come out here, you can still put out an album and there's still an appetite for that that says a lot about the time period in the scene that you guys came from doesn't it? i mean that's 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 a pretty cool thing yeah but i think it says more about us yeah um, not not to be cocky or anything yeah. like there's bands that that from that time that made some sketchy decisions or m- albums or moves or whatever and and 
I think one of the reasons why our fans have stuck by us for, for 29 years is because we may not have done a whole ton of touring. We may not have released a lot of records with just those two records in the 90s, but we didn't put out anything bad or we didn't do any tours where we were falling off stage or we couldn't really kill it on stage, you know, and just and just impress everyone. So I think our fans and, and the people who've heard rumors of us, there's not really anything bad out there, you know, and I think they appreciate that, that we, you know, that, that we were an honest band and, and, and I think they really appreciate the fact that the third record is, you know, it's it's a serious album. It's it's us moving forward. It's not just us. It's definitely not us trying to rest on our laurels or recreate something. You know, like recreate something in a, in, a, in a false way. You know. Um, so I think our fans really just appreciate us and, and think we're a cool band. Well, that that is the case because what you guys did was so different and. Um, all those albums wind up getting lumped in, in together just because of the, the time they were released. But you guys had an attitude. It was heavy. It was in your face and it was different. You guys were from the East coast. You weren't from LA. What was the, what was sort of the, the scene like at the time? Like, you know, when, when you guys formed the band and it's, you know, late eighties, uh, 88, 89, before you released that first album, what was kind of the scene like in New York at that time, because we know what it was like in L.A., things had, had already blown up, and it was probably kind of fizzling as far as the L.A. hair metal scene, but what was it like in New York around the time you guys recorded that debut? Well, it was, it was a great time. There was lots of clubs. There was lots of bands getting signed. There was lots of labels sniffing around. Um, I guess when we formed the biggest band in New York was Law & Order, and um, there was also bands like Service of Power, and um, Warrior Soul, you know. So it was it was a great scene, but really, uh, as you said, yeah, it was very different from LA, and and we we embraced that, you know. We we didn't have any problem with with LA bands, but we were glad we were our own thing. Well, Rob, this may shock you to hear, but um, getting off topic of Spread Eagle for just a minute, um, I was actually on hand in '06 during the infamous. Um, tour, uh, Helmet, Sebastian Bach, and Guns N' Roses. I was there in Ames, Iowa at the Hilton Coliseum. And in doing my research for this, did not realize at the time that you were pulling double duty on that tour, pull, playing bass for Sebastian and Helmet in opening for Guns N' Roses. Um, what what was that like? And I, I mean, it was crazy to look back on it because I actually saw one of the shows. Um, what was that like for you? Because what I heard is that you had to, had to learn Helmet's set and a few hours and it was, and then there you were out there on stage doing it, pulling double duty. What, what was that like for you? It was crazy. I mean, there was nothing glamorous about it because it was just so, just, it was such an insane situation, you know, like uh, that they were in a bad, bad place. And uh, the tour had gone through, the tour was an amazing tour, obviously. This, this Guns N' Roses are headlining. But the tour had gone through some little road bumps with um, Eagles of Death Metal coming on and being being thrown off after like a half a set or, or one short set, and then them saying bad things about Axel and Sebastian in the press, which wasn't wasn't totally uncalled for. Um, it was totally uncalled for. So, um, so we went through that little speed bump, and this was the very next show that Helmet came in to replace. Eagles of Death Metal, and then um, the and the bass player couldn't get in. So it was like it was like a string of, of bad luck starting to happen, and, and um, we were all concerned with just writing the ship and uh, and and making it making it work out. So uh, it was difficult because it was it was it was a lot of material, <laughs> and, you know, in in about four hours, and, and the helmets. You know, all their materials odd time signatures. So, you know, it's not simple 4 4 rock and roll, you know. But it turned out well. It turned out really well. And uh, I had fun with it. And uh, it, it proved something to me that, if, you know, you never know what you, you can or can't accomplish if, if you don't try. Well, it's very ambitious. And it's actually the night the show I saw was even more craziness because. I believe that night, Guns N' Roses had it was a horrible snowstorm in the Midwest, and there it was. Uh, I think Guns N' Roses had some trouble getting in, maybe from Chicago, and Sebastian had to play longer. 
I think Hellman had to play a longer set. I think you guys had to come out with Sebastian and play three or four more encores. So it was, I don't know if you remember that show, but it was it was insane. And so it was even more work for you. I hope you made it double that night at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. No, I I did it as a favor for Helmet actually. That's cool. I di- I didn't charge them. Um, yeah, there was times. Well, that was back before um, GNR got really prompt again with their yeah. time with their time <laughs> slots. Right you know, now they're now they're very uh, they're very on with that. And it wasn't like any you know. It's just a matter of I guess Axel decided at some point he was he wanted to go on time. You know, every night. And that's when it changed. But this was before that. So that situation of being of them calling um, the stage manager, of, of Axel calling the stage manager, Tom Mayhew, and telling him to, to, you know, to give us more songs, to tell us to play longer, was actually common on that tour. Okay. Interesting. Well, Rob, you've, you've, you've done so much, and you know, I've just been such a fan of of your playing and the, the bands that you've worked with. I mean, does, oh, thank you so does, much. Well, does, 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 does something stand out to you? Cause I mean, obviously spread Eagle is like you said, it was your indoctrination into, into the music business. It's, it's sort of, I don't want to say the, you know, it's kind of a cliche to call it the mothership, but is there, when you are able to come back and, and, and do an album that's as good and, and as what you've done, you know, with, with a spread Eagle, a subway to the stars, of all that you've done on stage with, you know, in front of thousands of people, whether it be with Sebastian Bach or whether it be, you know, recording with UFO or, or touring with UFO, is, is is there something that stands out that's that's the most gratifying for you? Or is, is it all just kind of part of, of, of what you do and just all part of, of your story? Well, something about Spread Eagle, you're asking, or something about any, anything? Yeah, well, just like, you know, particular. seeing as how you've come back and been able to, to really do some great things with Spread Eagle, but... In the meantime, you've gone on to do really great things as well. But is is there something more gratifying to you about being able to come back and make an album with Spread Eagle? That because that's your indoctrination into music, that that makes it stand out more. That your accomplishments yeah. with Spread Eagle. Yeah, yeah. There is something intangible there that it's like that. No matter how hard I tried to shake, it was always there with Spread Eagle because it's something that was as I said it was it's what taught me how to be in a band and uh, so that's it's you know it's like your first love or something you know so um, so yeah there's something that's always going to be there this connection with me and Spread Eagle uh, because you know I was a kid and and you know first record deal and it's, it was so exciting and you know videos on MTV and you know when that happens when you're in your early 20s that's that's very profound and lasting so in that regard yes there's yeah. there's something that was always unfinished business and and, and, a, and a deep deep connection to that band and i know ray west our singer feels the same way but we, um but yeah there's been a lot of cool things along the, the, the way you know over the years and I'm, I'm very lucky and appreciative of all of it well before it all kind of it, one thing leads to another, yeah. leads to another, leads to another, and, you know, that's the way it works. Yeah, absolutely. And before we let you go, I was going to ask you about uh, singer Ray West and just kind of what your working relationship's been like now for, you know, for 30 years. Um, obviously, there's been, you know, time off and, big you know, chunks of time in between and people going off and doing other things. And Ray's even stepped away from music altogether uh, in the meantime. But what a voice just going back and listening to that uh, first Spread Eagle album this week, uh, you know, knowing that we were going to be talking to you, it's like, man, that, those vocals just sear over that music. I mean, it's unbelievable. And, and to still have that relationship to this day and the new album, the voice is still there. It's still so great. Just talk about Ray and, and kind of what he brings to the band and what your relationship's been like through these 30 years. Well, Ray and I are true friends and, and we've, we've always been friends. Uh, we never really had any, beefs or problems with each other even when the band was breaking up i mean we weren't we weren't uh in really close contact for some years we would occasionally see each other or talk to each other because we were both still in manhattan uh new york but um but we never had any problems which is a nice thing you know because it's easy to to you know pick up where you left off if if there's not this nagging issue that's like you know we have to resolve this you know kind of thing 
So I get along with Ray really great. I love him very much. And the whole band gets along really, really famously. And, and we're lucky about that. Um, it's just a, it's just a thing that either happens or it doesn't, you know, in this band, we really get along really great. We have a lot of fun together. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's awesome to be, to be working with Ray again. And, uh, and he, his voice, I agree, is just incredible. It's just so like the thing with that first album, people were so awestruck by just the aggression of it. Um, not just from voc- not just vocally, musically and vocally, but Ray has a, just a gorgeous instrument, you know, and um, he's just such a has a beautiful voice on top of the screaming and the the attitude, you know, and uh, I really appreciate that side of him also, where it's it's just he can just he can, like on the song Solitaire on the new album Subway to the Stars, he just croons. It, it reminds me of like. Um, Greg Allman or something, you know, he's just, he can croon with, with, with just as much as he can scream. So I, I really love his voice and, uh, he's a perfect example of, of someone, you know, an instrument that should have been heard a lot more when, when, when he was young, you know, his instrument. Uh, I'm not sure why, you know, why he never went on to, to greater heights back then, but, but he's doing it now. So that's all that matters. Um, but I, I think his voice is up there with with the best. Yeah, yeah, could not agree more, Rob. I tell you what, man, congratulations on the album Subway to the Stars. It, it is tremendous. I want to urge um, all of our listeners to head over to the band's website, SpreadEagle.us. You can check out the tour dates and ways to get the new album. It's available um, digitally on all all the formats anywhere you get uh, your digital music, um, yeah, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, etc. You can also get a physical copy on Amazon, so check that out. Rob, cannot thank you enough. You'll never know how much... Uh, being able to talk to you today means to, to us having you on the podcast, man. This is a, a long time coming for us to be able to have um, any member of Spread Eagle. We were really um, excited to to talk to, to Ray and yourself, and maybe we'll be able to do that next time. Uh, we'll have to I work out. So. Yeah, because Ray, Ray was kind of busy. I think Ray was uh, recording or doing something today, man. So next time we'll have to, to have both of you, and we'll do it. But I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll come out to one of these shows and um, – We'll be in touch. We'll uh, we'll come by and say hello the right way here on one of these shows this uh, this spring, my man. Thank you, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. You bet, Rob. Have a great uh, have a merry Christmas, happy holidays, and uh, safe and, and happy holidays to to you and your family and and the band. Certainly, uh, have a great one, man. Thank you, thank you. Tell you what, that was amazing. Really hit it off with uh, Rob. It was tremendous to get into all the Spread Eagle stuff going back uh, to the late 80s um, in New York when the band was formed and then the debut album in 1990. You know, Switchblade Serenade was uh, was uh, really the big hit that put Spread Eagle on the map and on MTV. And then kind of the rise and fall, how quickly it went away. And to still be out there now putting out new music, touring. Again, you can go to spreadeagle.us to get information on the shows and to pick up the album. They do have a video for that album called Sound of Speed on YouTube and on their website. So check that out. The video is tremendous. And I think the songs on the new album, you know, they stand up. They they stand up. That original release is so heralded by, you know, people in the know. I mean, you go to any top hair metal albums, um, you know, list and that album always pops up on there. Even though, you know, technically to me, it's not really a hair metal album. They were so different. They had the, that New York East Coast attitude. They were not the typical sleazy Sunset Strip band. They were not Rat or Poison, but you know, obviously, um, uh, you know, bands of that ilk. They did come from you know that time frame and did come out when they did. Uh, you think about the bands that came out around that time that had later releases. You know, when it's 1990 is when their album came out. Obviously, that's around the time that the scene was kind of dying. So maybe bad timing, maybe. Um, not really fair treatment uh, by their record label at the time. That's always kind of been the rumor as well, that uh, that their record label, MCA, didn't really put enough um, effort behind the band and they didn't get to, get to tour a lot back in, the, back in the day, but they did release that second album, Open to the Public, which I was always a fan of as well. But now, moving forward, here they are going out on a tour. Can't wait to catch them. So please be on the lookout for that. Guys, we hope... You have a great holiday season. I know it's cliched. Anytime you're, you know, you watch a show, you you listen to a podcast. Everybody's wishing you a happy Christmas, safe and happy New Year. The same drivel. That's been the case for us though, because we 
truly appreciate you checking us out and keeping us afloat and listening and providing feedback and subscribing to the podcast. It keeps us going. Um, we've done over 150 episodes now. Um, you know, guys like Joe Elliott, Ted Nugent, Matthias Jabs from the Scorpions, members of Motley Crue, Kiss, Rat. Um, we just had Tom Kiefer back on. I mean, that's the lifeblood of the show is bringing on these guests. And we could not continue to do that without your support and uh, subscribing, leaving us a star rating. And um, you really cannot voice my appreciation to you guys enough because this is what I've always dreamt of doing. I'm 35 years old. These bands are in my blood just as much as they are yours. Now, granted, I came about it probably later in life, but um, it's always been a passion for me. I was at the first Rocklahoma. I'll be at the next Rocklahoma. I spend a lot of my summer traveling, uh, going to concerts, doing interviews, writing reviews. And uh, during the winter months, we still roll along. And that's what we're doing here as we are slowly uh, closing the door on 2019. We have another show coming up uh, next week um, where I will actually be on the road um, going on a Caribbean cruise so life could be worse for me as a Midwesterner, you know, going on the road and, uh, you know, going out of, out of the country rather is, uh, is pretty exciting around the Christmas season because I mean, I, I'm just not a winter person. I want to get out there. I want to get away from it. I want to get into the tropical climate. So that's why uh, I travel a lot during the holiday season. So that episode will be brought to you kind of, um, preempted if you will. And then, um, I may take a week off before coming back because I may not be back in the country in time. You know, the whole cell phone service, internet thing. Sometimes it's good to get away and lose all those things, but you miss it as well. You want to, you know, keep up with the podcast. We try to do this weekly with at least one guest. So we'll see how it works out. Definitely going to be a show next week. Again, we appreciate you hitting that subscribe button on Apple podcasts, Google play, Stitcher, or Spotify. Any way you choose to take in the show, we appreciate it. So Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, enjoy it all, and we'll be back next week here on the Music Mania Podcast.